All right, so um, hello. Uh, I'm Shayla Brown of Genesis Birthing and Living. Um, so this is, a, this is a birth story, pretty much. We're going to talk about birth. You know, um, I'm pretty much going to be listening to you because as a birth worker, we do a lot of talking. Um, so I want an opportunity to listen to moms talk about their birth experiences. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to you and you just kind of tell me who you are, where you're located, um, and I guess anything else you want us to know. Okay, well... Let me start off by saying thanks so much for having me and, um, you know, introducing me to, you know, um, everything that you have going on, because this is the perfect opportunity for um, for me to, you know, just get the the information out that I want to get out to the public. So, um, yeah, I, I thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. But by the way, my name is Mariah Patton. I am the author of home births are better and i am located in st louis missouri where i had my first child um, in a hospital um, and um, my second child i had him and he was actually my home birth but um yeah i had him in a different state i had him in chicago illinois but yeah um, i have two birth stories that I would love to share and I'll be adding on to my birth stories uh, in about six months after I have my third child. So, oh, well, congratulations. Yeah. I'm 20 years of age and um, thank you. I am very excited to basically um, share my story and help inspire other women to basically do what I did, so yeah. Okay, um, well, thank you for, for being on. So, okay, I'm interested in a lot of things. So, I, you know, I, I definitely wanna know more about the book, Home Births Are Better, because I, I love that title, first of all, because home births, in my opinion, are better. So you say you had a hospital oh, birth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, you say you had a hospital birth mm -hmm. and a home birth. Yes. Okay. So can you just tell us uh, a little bit about your, your two births, um, how they went, um, your feelings about them, and, you know, I guess why, where the concept of your book came from. Okay. So um, all the way back to when I had my first child, um, Basically, at that time, with a certain mindset that I was in, I wasn't um, ever planning to have a home birth at that time. But my experience at the hospital was very, um, honestly, I was very dissatisfied with the hospital process because I wasn't comfortable. I was being, I didn't like the fact that People kept on checking on me and I didn't have peace. I didn't, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go. And I was undereducated at the time. So, you know, I just basically let them do whatever they wanted to do. Uh, well, not whatever they wanted to do, but for the most part, I felt like I had no, no say so or no control. And not only that, um, it just, it just wasn't comfortable for me at all. So that's what I didn't like about the hospital. And um, another thing that I didn't like was how they went about the placenta and everything. And even though I wasn't, you know, properly educated on everything, I still felt like the process that they were doing and the process they went through, it just wasn't sitting right in my spirit. And I, and I felt like something was off. And then another thing I didn't like that goes back to the privacy it was so many people in the room that i didn't even know like so many strangers while you know i basically had my business all you know mm, i'm yeah and then an another thing they have you lay on your back so i'm laid on my back with my legs all up in the air and i didn't like how it was just a whole bunch of people in the room just watching me right and that was just so uncomfortable and then i didn't like all these people touching my baby moving her around because I feel like the as soon as the baby comes out, it's only the mother or the father should, you know, only be dealing with, you know, putting their energy and their touch and stuff like that on the baby. So I, that's another thing I didn't like. And them 
putting the the ointment on her eyes and yeah. trying to give her shots. I just the whole situation just really pushed me to the point where I told myself. That. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. I just got a call. But um, okay, so that was that is what pushed me to tell myself and to go about my next birth very differently. So, um, so yeah, after that, I told myself I'm never going back to the hospital to deliver a baby. And so when when my son, my second child, um. All throughout, when I was pregnant with him, I was educating myself on home births. Uh, I would watch very, uh, well, I would watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos of women who already had home births and listen to their advice about what they went through and what they experienced. And then I would also talk to women that I met in public and, um, and I would basically also get advice from them and see what they had to say about their home birth experience and um what else did i do i was just basically educating myself on how to properly have a home birth um because i was just so driven to make sure that i took it into my own hands this time because i was very passionate about that mm -hmm. so uh not only that um like i would do prenatal yoga to make sure that because uh, like i don't have any health problems so that's that's why um like certain things like I understand certain women or whatever may have certain health conditions that they feel like may stop them from being able to, you know, uh, not have a doula or a midwife present while they're giving mm -hmm. birth at home. But um, but that's another thing that, that was driving me to, to take it into my own hands because I didn't have the money to pay for doula services or a midwife. So all of that was like, okay, I'm not gonna let any of this stop me from, right you know, um, knocking out my goal. So I was just doing all the research, taking all the advice in, mentally preparing myself and, um, and also physically preparing myself. And everything that I did worked out to my advantage to where I had a successful home birth and, and it was so empowering to where I'm gonna do it again. Yeah. Right? So that's, those two experiences really like shaped even more, you know, how I feel about home births. And then from me doing all that research and having the experience of being in a hospital and having a home birth, that's what drove me to writing the book. And also um, my son's father, he inspired me to write the book because mm -hmm. that, so uh, yeah, I wrote the book and it's actually a quick guide. I do plan on either adding information to it or mm -hmm. writing like a second edition or uh -huh. something like that because uh, I just want to go deeper in depth. But other than that, uh, it's um, the way I set it up is very, like you can read through it very quickly. So it's, it's I call it a book or ebook, but it's, it's more of a guide because it's like steps or like things to, things that you, that I did that I feel like is basically the, the the most important key points in order to make sure that you have a successful home birth. So it's like basically a quick guide to having a successful delivery, which is the subtitle of the book. So yeah, okay. it's very straight to the point and quick okay. because like some people may not want to read a lot yeah. about it or something, but yeah, that was just how I did it. How yeah, I did. no, I understand that. I understand that people might not want to read and I understand making it straight to the point, but at the same time, it, it takes a lot to have an empowered birth, right? So you might have to push past the barrier of not wanting to read because in yeah. all, you know, in my experience as a doula and in my experience of having yeah. uh, three home births, one in unassisted and one in the hospital, it's a lot of reading involved and a lot of, especially if you don't have something like a doula or, you know, a midwife. So I, I, I understand that, you know, and that was kind of a, a barrier for me. Like right. as I work with clients, I'm like trying to give them information to read and I'm like, oh, you might not read it, but it's important that you push past that barrier if you're going to have a birth that you're in control of. 
So I just want to add that. Also, I yes. want to ask, I want to ask you, um, what was your support like? So you didn't have a midwife or a doula for your home birth? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, honestly, the only support that I had was my son's father. Okay. That was it. Okay. So and he actually encouraged me very well because, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I I'll let you finish that. Um, but I'm just too. Okay, so what about your parents and your like your siblings or cousins or friends? What did they think about you guys doing this? Well, my family, they live in St. Louis and at the time I had the home birth, I was in Chicago and okay. on top of that, my my family isn't supportive of, you know, uh I'm not close to them in that way and on top of that, they just don't support me. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it was just one of those situations yeah. that, like, I was like, it's all up to me. And you know, so, yeah, he was my only support. Okay. So what tips would you give uh, a couple who's in this situation? And, you know, a lot of the weight is falling on the mom and the, the dad. What are some tips you would give to the support person, the dad? Um, and then what are some tips you would give moms? Um, support, well, some tips that I would give the dads is like, um, to, to basically always, always be present. Like let, let the mother know that you're there for her, always encourage her and tell her that, you know, she's doing good and she's strong enough to get through this. And, you know, you're going to be there no matter what, like that emotional support really can change the mother's perception because I experienced that like at times where I wanted to give up because of the pain and he would just remind me like you're doing great and even I had him rubbing my back and stuff like that and <laughs> yeah. even though uh the physical the physical you know uh contractions that I was dealing with was overpowering his rubbing it was still like <laughs> okay well his words are still like nurturing and nourishing my soul so it's like okay I can actually think when when he would say certain things so it would bring me back to reality like like at times where I would feel like giving up he would make me feel like I can keep on going mm. so that's very important for the father to be present and to constantly you know, talk to the mother and speak, just tell her everything she needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And some tips for the mother, um, I would say, uh, honestly, now me, uh, when I gave birth to my son, I know certain, some women scream, but I actually was surprised that I didn't scream. Mm -hmm. And how I ended up not screaming was, the, how, I de how I described the pain that I was feeling um while he was coming out it was so painful that I couldn't even make a sound oh, wow. so basically it was me sucking it up you can say okay and I was surprised because I was like okay I was I would think that you know I would make some type of sound but I feel like embracing the pain mm -hmm. and knowing that um that every contraction and constantly reminding yourself like okay it's painful, but my baby's about to be here. I'm about to see mm -hmm. my baby. I'm about to be able to touch my baby and stuff like that. Like constantly yeah. reminding yourself that it, it's only temporary will get you through it. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing is like um, breathing, even though it's, whew, it's, it's something to deal with. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit and act <laughs> like I just took it like a G all like right. that. Cause I did end up crying a couple of times, right. but, uh, <laughs> but it is, I feel like if I can do it, then other women can do it because our bodies are made for this. So that's what I want women to understand that they don't already understand is that our bodies are made for this. And it's, it's very possible to embrace the pain and to get through it because it's only temporary. All mm -hmm. pain is temporary. Mm -hmm. So that's, those, those are the tips that I would give. Okay, you just said a whole lot of stuff there. I have like a bunch of follow up questions. So okay, I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the okay. partner support question. What do you think this experience did for your bond? Your uh, bond with your um, your is it your husband, your boyfriend, your I, I I don't know what to call them. So let me know. Yeah. 
uh, my son's father, my okay. my um, spiritual life partner. Okay. I don't necessarily use boyfriend, but I refer to him as my husband before. But we have a we have a deep connection. But that experience. I feel like brought us closer because we went through it together. Okay. And he was there the whole pregnancy and during the whole birth. So I feel like for us to experience that together um, brought us closer because it was like, you know, uh, he was supporting me and, uh, uh, you know, from that was like a moment that we did together so it was it's like it's like teamwork you can say mm -hmm. so I feel like that experience brought us together because we went through it together we experienced it together mm -hmm. okay okay um and afterwards did you experience any kind of health challenges any scares did anything go wrong honestly um with me being very healthy um i actually didn't i didn't even tear i didn't rip, wow. um and i stopped bleeding within a, a couple of days but um but yeah like when, when i got checked out at the hospital they was like uh you know you're all good to go you don't even have to basically get you know have a have a room because you're so like together we yeah. don't need to you know put you into a bed and make sure like do any stitching up or nothing like that so uh i actually was surprised that i didn't need any work done on me because my focus was on my experiencing contractions and you know of course the blood was still coming out and i had to wear um the pads and stuff other than that right. uh i was completely fine afterwards and and i feel like a part of that is because I I was working my pelvic area all throughout the pregnancy, doing prenatal yoga, doing Kegel exercises, um, staying active, exercising, walking, mm -hmm. stretching, mm -hmm. um, drinking water. I love water. Okay. So all those I feel like play a part in you know yeah um, the reproductive system. Okay, thank you. Because that was going to be my next question. You know, what were some things you did to prepare? So that's that's good. Um, so the other thing, oh, okay. <laughs> the other thing I want to ask is, you said that uh, you know all pain is temporary, and you kind of thought of it that way as you were going through it. What would you say? How would you say your spirit grew from the physical experience of childbirth and from experiencing it naturally without any medication? <laughs> Oh my God, it's, it's, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. Like I love that you just asked me that because it just reminded me of how, how powerful I felt afterwards because I was thinking to myself like, yeah, that was some pain to deal with, but for me to deal with that, that makes me feel like I'm on top of the world. Like right. I can, I can, I'm strong enough for anything. I can take anything. Like, yeah. And, and not only that, um, it, it taught me how strong I was. It taught me how, how I can constantly push myself, even if I feel like giving up, because that's where strength, that's what that's how you gain strength through, you know, uncomfortability and, and pushing yourself, even if you feel like giving up. You know, that's how you build character and that's how you, you just build on yourself um, spiritually. And it actually um, made me, I feel like, tap into my power even more. And it's like, the effect it had on me spiritually was, it, it made me, I just feel like it made me even more powerful and it just encouraged me to to basically be able to feel like I, I can I can overcome anything. So it, I feel like it made me really grow mentally and physically. It made me feel like, you know, there's nothing that I can't do. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I, I totally understand that. Were you saying something? Um, no, I feel like that was all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So what do you think the importance is of telling your story, particularly your home birth, your hospital birth, and just as African American woman? What do you think the power of telling your story is? And how do you use your story in life now?
Um, I feel like the power of telling my story is basically uh, being able to encourage women that they don't have to be scared or they don't have to run from um, childbirth with no medication because honestly, what the hospital calls medication is not medication, it's drugs. And I've done my research mm -hmm. um, on the, the uh, on a couple of them because actually with my first birth um, in the hospital, I actually had the epidural and I forgot to mention that. Okay. So one thing that I know is that whatever the mother consumes mm -hmm. uh, automatically goes to the baby. And right. they, they tell you, which they shouldn't even tell you because they basically lied to me. They told me that right. My, my daughter wouldn't be affected, but I know that she was because I can tell the difference from me having an epidural with her and from my son being natural because my daughter would not latch onto my breast. Wow. And I know that has something to do with the way, yes, and, and that's another thing that, that I realized because my son, he immediately latched on and was, and was you know, he, he, he immediately like didn't uh, hesitate or he didn't have any trouble latching on and mm -hmm. I know that was because um no no drugs or no medication was involved because what the drugs do is it basically reduces the mother's awareness mm -hmm. and connection to the whole birth experience wow. and the baby so that's what happened with my daughter because I had a I had um you know took the epidural which affected my um my connection with her and another thing that happens when you take drugs or the medication is drugs. that you uh, basically interfere with your body's natural process of going about natural birth you won't be able to feel your contractions and when you're not mm -hmm. able to feel your contractions you won't know when to push because right. when you don't have uh anything in, in your system you know you feel your body doing everything like when my son was like with my son for me just going about it naturally I felt my body like honestly at a point when he was finna come out I felt everything like I felt my body opening up to where I had no control over my right, body anymore right. I just had to surrender because my body was opening up and I, I felt that I didn't feel that with my daughter and on top mm. of that with my son, um, I, I wasn't on my back or anything. I was actually kneeling, or not kneeling, but like squatting or standing up. Mm -hmm. And I hey, caught mama. him as he came out. So that's another thing that uh, that played a part um, in the natural process. Me not being um, influenced by any drugs and, and me also not prolonging labor by, you know, standing up. Because another thing is um, I want women to know that the hospital, like, it's like, they shouldn't tell you to, I don't know, they have their own process of doing it, but this is why I feel like telling my story should make a difference and is going to make a difference because I want mm -hmm. women to know that there is a proper way of giving birth. Like, you prolong and put yourself through so much more pain because you are laying on your back and that's right. you know going against the natural process that's basically going against gravity so right. my son he came out within six hours my daughter since i was since i couldn't move my legs mm -hmm. i was basically in labor for about 22 hours wow so that's a huge difference so wow. standing up and no drugs really does make a difference yeah so, yeah yeah well that Oh yeah, and that's another thing, the lights. Um, yeah, the lights, like when my son came out, uh, we immediately turned off the light because from the baby being in the womb for nine months, you know, darkness, it's uh -huh. like for them to come out to these artificial lights. Now I can see if it was sunlight, but right. sunlight would probably be, you know, not, you know, it right. was natural, but still it's like light period, immediately after they come out, it's like that, that has to have, some type of bad effect on on baby's eyes so right that's another thing i just felt like me telling my story would encourage women to actually go about birth naturally and to not be so quick to have these drugs because they're scared of embracing the pain i feel mm -hmm. like they shouldn't highlight the pain they should just right. more focus on them taking their child's you know um their birth experience into their own hands because right. it's more important for us to do certain things and us to know our power as women because we can naturally 
like we've been doing it ever since the beginning of time so right all of a sudden just because hospitals are invented doesn't mean that we should just trust other people with our birth experiences because there are experiences and we right. can't let anybody else control what's ours that's how i feel about it so i feel like telling my story would change a lot of women's minds about the way they go about birth because the only reason why they're scared is because they don't know right so i just feel like that's important for me to tell my story well, yeah, thank you for again you said a mouthful okay so let's see where do i start um no problem. <laughs> i know <laughs> I, I love that though i love that perspective i completely 100 percent agree um because it's very important for us to be present in our births so that we can be present in the stories and so we can have yes. um so we can have con control of it and it's ironic that we yes you know that we give up the control in order to have control if, if that yes. makes sense so we're afraid of the pain and we're like well i just want to be able to control the whole process because going into this unknown is some is a it's a thing it's an experience that we can't 100 percent control so we have to trust the process we have to trust our body we have to submit to the process we have to humble ourselves and so to avoid doing that a lot of times yes. we try to grab control of it by you know inducing it you know making it start when we want it to start um, making it speed up when we want it to speed up make the pain stop when we want the pain to stop make the baby come out the way we want them to so but Ironically, we give up right. control, when we which do is that. very unnatural. Right, 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 right. It's unnatural, and it has all these mm -hmm. negative consequences right. that we're seeing. I just read a, an article the other day about a mom who who died, and it wasn't because anything was wrong with her. It was because of the effect of the drug. So, when we talk about our negative maternal uh, mortality, right? You know, we talk about our negative maternal mortality rates. Um, a lot of it has to do with drug usage and i think we could have a lot more positive births and positive birth stories yes. if we weren't just so afraid of that one thing that the quote unquote pain which is manageable and which you can survive because like you said you were made to do this so yeah so yeah i love that's another um, thing that i talk about in my book okay. um is the power of visualization mm -hmm. because from women having automatic preconceived notions that are negative about oh um it, it's gonna be too painful without them even trying right it's like that right there automatically you know what you tell yourself is what you're going to believe so right. if like like you were saying if you replace those negative thoughts or those negative beliefs with positive beliefs then you'll be able to transform your experience because how how i use the power of visualization i always visualized and was imagining um myself giving birth you know with no problems or or nothing i, I was always visualizing positive outcomes mm -hmm. and i feel like that did yeah. up to a very great extent because yeah. if i was visualizing negative outcomes I, I probably would have manifested something negative yeah so i feel like that's very important also for women to know that they can they can you know alter their reality just by switching how they think about it and it's that easy because it takes right. the same energy to think negative as it does to think positive so yeah that is so true that's so true um that's so true and your body even has physical responses to stress and if you stress yourself out all in your head your body responds to it uh, physically and now you're releasing yes. you know adrenaline and now your body's all tense when it's supposed right. to be like you said opening up for you to release this baby it's it's tense and it's kind of, it's closing, yes. clenching up instead. And so, like you said, you've manifested this. Now it is going to hurt more because mm -hmm. your body is fighting against, you know, your mind is fighting against your body pretty much. Um, the other thing to what you were saying about, you know, yes. instead of being so afraid of the pain, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> you also have to understand it is a milestone of womanhood and it is a, um, it is a rite of passage. And so, you kind of have to woman up and do it. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you have to get to that place yes. where you realize yes. <laughs> I have to do this. Okay. I have to do this. So let me figure out how, how God intends me to do it because he didn't set me up to do this and, and then not equip me with what I need to do it. And then 
there's that spiritual growth on the other side of it that you never get to if you try to avoid um the again the quote unquote pain you know yes. the pain or the or try to avoid the process um you just i feel like there's some growth that you forfeit when you run from it if that makes sense yes because i i totally understand because um I was, I'm, I look at it like, you know, what you saying about you have to woman up, that's totally, I feel like that's necessary because it's like, okay, if you woman enough to have sex, you know, you right. should be woman enough to push that baby out. Right. You know, <laughs> that's how I look at it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really, you know, and just like, you know, we yeah. expect certain like, things certain things from men we expect them to make certain milestones you know we don't really, really want to hear a man talking about oh i gotta provide buy for my family and then he falling apart and he just gonna avoid doing it well we got some it we take some issue with that you know what i mean so there are some things that we just have to meet in life mm -hmm. and then we have to we have to do it you know and once you get that mindset you do start to discover ways to do the thing that you think you can't even do you know right so let's see i have uh we have a few more minutes um i guess at this point i will um is there anything else that you want to add um about your book of course you know you want to let us know where we the name of the book do you have a copy of it that we can see it's actually um it's on amazon it's an okay. ebook as of right now i okay. don't have hard copies made. Okay. um but uh yeah you can purchase on um amazon um and what's the name of the, it? the book is Again. called home births are better okay yeah um home births are better by mariah Patton. Mm -hmm. and um honestly i was actually thinking about in order to, cause it's not necessarily all about the money. I really, you know, I would, I was actually thinking about just giving out what I wrote for free, like through, cause mm -hmm. it's a PDF document. So, um, you know, I was actually thinking about just spreading the information that way because I, um, but yeah, just because I really want women to understand that things have to change um if, especially if we want to grow as a people so mm -hmm. um so yeah uh it, you can find it on amazon but also um my contact information so that you know whoever wants to just you know uh, if they don't if they can't purchase it or if they just rather not purchase it that's that's fine with me too um i'll be able to give them my uh well they can give me their email or whatever but I'll be able to send it to them through email, um, you know, well, or, this or is, another way of going about it, just getting the information out because that's. Well, you know, no, you bought that, you bought that information with your experiences. It's worth, it's worth paying for. But if you want, <laughs> what we can do is maybe set up a discount <laughs> code, you know, for maybe like my followers or something. If you can set up a special discount code maybe and we can offer it that way if you kind of want to give a, a bit of a discount but i do believe that you should be compensated for your um for your experiences and for your knowledge that you gained from it um and then in my experience when you kind of make when you make people pay for it they value it more and um so yeah so that's what i'm gonna suggest oh. you know <laughs> um that you oh well do. i love that you said that yeah because it already is 9.99 on Listen, amazon that's just ten dollars so right. yeah <laughs> they're gonna spend that on a chicken sandwich somewhere so i <laughs> <Right>. mean <laughs> i think they i think we can afford ten dollars <laughs> you know so um but i understand that yeah. i understand that um, <laughs> so it's on amazon it's called home births are better of course um you can send me some pictures of it and i'll post all mm -hmm. of this with your blog post I'll post a link um, and just kind of give them information okay. about where they can find you. Um, 
So just a last, I guess, a closing statement. Um, okay. As if I was if I was a mom and I was considering mm-hmm. home birth, but I have you know no support. Uh, maybe maybe my my son my child's father is, you know, he's kind of on the fence or he is supportive, but he you know he also might be kind of scared too. I'm kind of scared, um, and my family is not supportive or. They mm-hmm. are trying to be supportive, but you know, it might be a little negative because they're just a little scared themselves. What would you, what's one thing you would say to um, mm-hmm. encourage that couple in that situation? One thing that I would say to encourage that that couple is um, basically if you can't find support from your family or people that's close to you, Honestly, sometimes strangers give the best support. Mm. So um, I feel like if you can't get support from, you know, people that's close to you, uh, do do like uh, just watch, you know, certain. I feel like, you know, um, basically, um, like what I did, I, I, I would watch YouTube videos and like educate educate myself so I feel like if you don't have support then my advice would be to at least educate yourself so that you can get advice from from other people that that mm-hmm. would that that would be my advice um you know okay. to take advice from other people if you don't have the necessary support that you need so that you can you know move forward yeah okay thank you thank you and I- don't get discouraged because you don't have support understand yeah. that it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that's good advice. Um, you definitely have to create a bubble, if you will, uh, around yourself and kind of, um, yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Um, thank you, Mariah, for your time. That's Mariah Patton. Home births are better. We're going to link all of your information um, mm-hmm. in the blog, also in the, uh, in the description section of this video. Um, Thank you, everybody else, for tuning in. Um, I'm going to, uh, I guess we'll, we'll see you next time, and I'll probably be interviewing somebody else. Um, thank you.